Hey guys, Chris and Mario here, back with another anatomy sketchbook page. And uh, been a little bit since we did one of these. Doing a lot of other videos recently for you guys. And uh, give one of these out, and I'm also going to be having some other videos out, which is, it's funny that... Sorry, I'm trying to think what I'm doing here. Um, just letting you know with this pose, I'll get back to what I was saying. I'm just trying to do like a somewhat underneath pose. You guys, I guess you guys can just see it develop as I go along. But the body's going to be going this way. It's going to be kind of like falling esque. One of them falling poses I do, that I like doing. Kind of. Hmm, actually, I'm not going to show as much. Maybe I should have the body either coming towards the side in the bottom there or away from us. Now I'm just talking out my, <laughs> what, what I'm planning on doing. But uh, to get back on topic, that was a little everywhere. Uh, I was talking about how I remember when I was first doing these real-time videos when I came back. I kept on saying like I had other videos planned and stuff like that and uh, you know I was looking forward to doing them they're a little bit different and then I finally after saying that for like I don't know like four or five videos finally actually got some of those videos out which are the ones you guys uh, have been seeing recently they're more like um, commentary subject based videos and uh, finally got some of those out and they've been pretty fun to make to be honest and it uh, seems like a lot of you guys really like them as well. So I'm really happy that you guys like those videos. So like I said, they're very fun to make. Now you can kind of see this coming together a little bit. I feel like I want to make a little bit more space between these two legs here. Also, just letting you guys know, uh, ah, before I say that, man, I'm all over the place. <laughs> um, I do have other videos coming that I'm really excited for. More subject-based videos and also some kind of like tutorial-esque videos that I've been thinking about doing. Um, yeah, so I got some videos like that that I'm looking forward to doing. And I hope you guys are looking forward to those. Oh, trying to make sure... I don't get too far off the screen here. But also, I got a new phone. So uh, for those of you who don't know, I use my phone for pretty much all of my video recording, editing, all that stuff. So new phone for me is like big thing and I wanted to make sure you know it was a phone that I liked and it was good and I'm used to which is the Note 10 Plus is this like going to be coming towards us or hmm yeah let's just have it coming towards us a little bit here that one's kind of going away though alright okay but yeah, I got a Note 10 Plus and big deal because the camera, uh, just a lot of cool things that are going to make it easier. Uploading time, downloading time, uh, exporting time for the videos, stuff like that. So hopefully you guys can even see the camera quality difference in here. Uh, I haven't done a real time video with this uh, camera yet so this is kind of like the test to see how well you guys can really tell because even in like speed videos like time-lapsed videos I mean you can tell the difference a little bit but oops some of the biggest differences you see in the real-time videos because you can actually get away from go get away with a pretty low resolution uh, time time-lapse video because it's so fast you're not really paying attention to like each little part of it I guess you could say I 
but yeah. Well, there is anatomy for this. And I've been super excited for this phone. I, I, yeah, it's, it's been a long time. Uh, the last phone I had was the Note 8. And I drew, I pretty much only get the Note phones. I mean, I won't get an iPhone until they get an iPhone with the frickin' pen in it. To be honest, uh, if I had an iPhone, it would make my life a lot easier, because I have the iPad Pro and a Mac. So, <laughs> it's like, if I had an iPhone, a lot of my messaging would be easier. Uh, AirDrop, oh my gosh, that would be beautiful. AirDrop would be amazing. Uh, so, that would, that would come easier, but... I don't know, right now I like my Samsung devices because I've pretty much been only Samsung exclusive for years and I'm really used to the software and hardware of it. Alright, I think I might call that good. <laughs> Make a goofy little face there. Oh, maybe I should uh, put the other arm going down that way, right? That'd be fun. Hand be the hand should be going downward, like that. Other finger like that. Eh? Eh? Yeah. Let's do it like that. So I'll put the thumb here. Then I'm going to put the pointer finger here. Middle finger. Ring finger. Pinky finger. Palm. Thumb area. Yeah. So let's move on to another position. Hmm. Maybe I'll draw something. Something a bit more. <laughs> I wouldn't say normal. Uh, what I what I was thinking. But that's obviously a lot less normal than what I'm about to do. But what I'm about to do isn't really practical, I guess you could say. It's just kind of like trying to flex my mind, I guess. Flex my, my brain muscles a little bit. What well, I guess I wouldn't really call flexing it. Because it's just, I don't know. You'll see, it, he's just standing there, but I wanted to have him having his arm, this arm up, but going kind of straight up over here. And then this part going up like this, and this part now coming up, but going over somewhat towards us. And nope. That's not what I wanted to do. Or is it? Maybe I could have it going down like this. Yeah, that would be nice, right? Yeah. Let's have it do that. So this is like this. Coming at us. And then we draw the other arm. Really coming at us. An angle like that. Then maybe. Kind of like a. hand, like a, almost like a karate hand, thumb on the other side, yeah, I think I'll call that good, good enough there, there's the finger lines, boom, shakalaka, doing a little bit of fore, fore, foreshortening there, 
that's what I kind of meant by like kind of flexing my mind trying to really just get that stuff in my mind if I do that enough and do it with like different parts of the body and different positions um, it gets my my gears going and I'm talking about my mind gears not other gears you nasty little <laughs> mm -mm. Okay, also I was going to say that uh, now that I finally got some of those other videos out, I wanted to have like a healthy balance of some of these real-time videos with also some of those more commentary-based videos or subject-based videos. And I uh, wanted to have a healthy little relationship with those. Oh my gosh, I think my foot went numb. I think I might have mentioned this before, but... If I, ever, if I ever talk about my foot going numb and you're like, man, this guy's got some problems. Like, that happens way too often. I'm actually sitting at a coffee table um, in my room. That's why my foot goes numb because I'm sitting crisscross at my table when I do uh, these real-time videos. When I do a lot of the time-lapse videos, I'm at my, I'm at my desk. And then if I do, the, when I do the audio recording over it, I'm also in my room. And, yeah. I got kind of like a jerry rig setup where it's not like I'm over here with a big, you know, gamer station with a huge microphone. I literally record the audio on my phone with the video editing app. And I, I do it into like a pillow section. I have a I have a pillow, and then I have my phone in my hand, and I just do the audio recording that way. So that way, it uh, helps block out any echo noise. I don't know why I'm telling you guys about this, <laughs> but you guys just got the whole story. The whole story. Okay, so new position. Let's think here. Mm. Maybe doing a little bit of a, an above position here. Maybe like this. This here. Here. Okay, now let me try to imagine this. There's like two different ways I, I draw. I either draw based on what I'm drawing on the page and I don't think about it at all in my head. Like, I don't try to imagine it in my head. Um, and then I just draw based on my knowledge of perspective and look at what's on the page. So I just don't use my imagination, I guess you could say, at, or at least it's not like the forefront of what I'm, what I'm using to create the image. And then there, there, there's another way where I actually, oh, I almost knocked over this thing up here, where I only think about what's in my mind like I look at this and then I kind of go to my mind sometimes I'll close my eyes and then I imagine what I'm trying to draw and then I draw based off of that and it sounds kind of strange until you kind of do that yourself and that's where I say it's the difference between drawing what you see here and drawing from what I would say your mind's eye but it's just your imagination same difference And here, I'm pretty much just drawing based off of what I see on the paper and then my knowledge a little bit. But drawing from your imagination and using also the knowledge of what you know, because you obviously would have to do that, um, and all the rules you learned. And if you, fl if you really practice drawing out of your imagination and you do it a lot, but you can only draw what you know, though, from your imagination. So that's that's where doing a lot of studying comes into play. But once you know enough and you use that, use your imagination enough, oh, it becomes it's it's way more effective than just drawing what you see on the paper because then you can move around the character flawlessly in your mind. 
and it's one of the things that I, I need to uh, practice a lot more and I might actually might do a video about it at some point but I just don't know how to as you could tell I had a hard time describing it just now <laughs> uh, now let's move on I'm gonna go and then let's move on to maybe they're like super crunched in here I don't know, I just want to draw something to fill in this little space here. <laughs> I could literally draw like someone. Kicking, I've already drawn a kicking pose in one of these. It doesn't mean I can't draw it again. I, I don't know why I think I can't draw like a similar pose again in these drawings, but oh no, I think their head, maybe I'll just do this. Typically when I do this, I like to have like a contrast of this going like this and the upper body up over here, uh, but yeah. Um, so I might flatten it out a little bit. So that's supposed to be an arm. It's going to be a head here. And let's do the X. It's going to be the other leg. Mm -mm. So this is going to be the crotch area. Right here. And the Botox area. Not Botox, the Budox. Budox. That foot looks weird. Let's just do this. It's getting a little small for my eyes here. I need, <laughs> I need glasses. All right, there we go. We're at 17. I guess we do something a little bit more simple up here. Probably just do one of my favorite head positions, kind of like this. It's where you go ahead and you draw like this. Got the nose. Got the eye. Let me go back down that way. Top of the head. Go back down that way. Ear is going to be roughly right over there. Go back to the jaw. Snap it in like that. Boom! You got a head in a crazy position. And I, I practiced this head position quite a few times in order to be able to do it in as little strokes as I just did. And it really, that's what it is. You just learn how to do it. You learn the shape. You actually learn everything about the head in that position. And then if you practice it enough times and you get it down to the most simple shapes, simple form as possible, so the most simple amount of lines, one, it's easier to memorize with less lines. I mean, would you be able to memorize 20 numbers better than five numbers? I don't think so. It's easier to memorize with more, you know, confident lines. Because when you're doing a bunch of sketching like this, it, it, it your mind gets kind of muddled. And you can tell when you're either rusty or you're, you don't really know exactly what you're doing, you'll do a lot of sketch lines. Because being confident without knowing anything won't change anything. <laughs> you actually have to do the studying. Oh, and I had a lot of people. This is going to be one of the last things I talk about in here. But um, in my last video, a lot of people were asking me, what is a study? And a study, you, you first of all, you can Google it. Um, you can look up what's an art study. Um, second of all, an art study is essentially just... 
you copying an image, but it's not just copying the image. You're essentially breaking down the things that make up the image. You're, you're doing it with purpose to learn something from that image. You're studying it. It's, it's, a, it's a study. So. And that's where, um, in painting, you'll hear a lot of things called uh, master studies. And, yeah. That's where master studies come in. Because you're essentially learning how to paint exactly how that master did it. And when you try to do that, you may not find out exactly how they did it. But you might find a way to end up doing it the way they did it through other means. Because... For example, this head, not everyone has to start with the eye or a cross. You could have started with the chin if that made you feel comfortable. That's what I mean by that. You might start in a different place and have slightly different techniques, but you can get still get to the same uh, conclusion in the very end. And that's the whole point of doing studies. Studies. Um, good thing I'm gonna go ahead and clean up some of these. Uh, maybe he'll have like a ponytail and maybe an ahoge. Some hair come out over here, right, right there. There's his ear. Draw. Might clean some of this up for the thumbnail. My legs are going numb again. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, guess I'll draw eyes on this while I say, How many of you got Ghost of Tsushima? <gasps> Tsushima? I know I said that funny. Um, but, yeah. How many of you guys got Ghost of Tsushima? Tsushima. It's su tsu Sushima. Or you could just say sushi. Because I got Ghost of Tsushima and started playing it. And uh, it's taken me a second to get used to because I've been playing a lot of Dark Souls-like games. And the the metrics in that are, are, are a little different than Dark Souls-like games. It's kind of the same concept, but... Not, not quite the same concept. It's the same concept, it's just played out differently. There's different things that uh, matter. You have to maximize different things when you're fighting somebody. So it's interesting in that regard. I just gotta get used to the controls. Like, I hated Sekiro when I was playing it because it was like Dark Souls games, but not. And I finally started getting good at it when I realized the what's important. Because in Dark Souls, you're always looking out for your uh, stamina meter. And that's not necessarily the case in Sekiro. Like, for example, running doesn't take up any stamina in Sekiro. But it takes up mass stamina in Dark Souls. So, I don't know. I love those types of games. But anyways, it's getting close to the end here. Um, I want to say big shout out and big thanks to my Patreons, especially my Chunin and Jonin tier. You guys are awesome. If you guys do want to see a little bit more from me, you guys can go check me on my Patreon link in the description. But yeah, I guess that's moving towards the closing. <laughs> If you guys like this video, please hit that thumbs up button. And if you're new to this channel, like you should see, please subscribe, hit the bell icon to get notified when each video comes out. And like always, guys, hope you're having a great day. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.